So let's see, boys. The Mage Nurse went live on Tuesday. It has been a full lockout since the Nerfs went live. Hunter's got like a small buff to their steady shot. So let's see how all of the classes are performing currently in Nomergon for week four. And this is all percentiles. We like to go off of 95th percentile over a range of one day. And as you can see, oh, the mighty have fallen. The fire mage living flame nerf was enough to take them off the number one spot. And it's now the enhancement shaman paradise. Look at that. In the 95th percentile, this shows you what anybody is pretty much capable of if you play, if you have good gear and you're doing your rotation correctly. If we go higher than the 95th percentile, this will show you if people are getting, uh, starting to get PIs. And so you can see DPS Warlock is now inching closer. And at the very max percentile, these are people with extremely fast kill times. They're getting PI and they have a perfect group comp and they have the gear and they're doing the rotations right and possibly doing a few things to inch them even farther in the percentiles like tanking all the mobs together in the menagerie and stuff like that so if we go up to max we can see that the warriors have now passed the fire mages in overall damage in the raid for the max percentile but for this video, it looks like Warlock across the board is either second or first in almost all fights uh, at the 95th, 99th, and, and max percentile. Uh, but the Enhancement Shamans are doing the best across the board for just the average player who's uh, parsing, you know, 95 or, or higher. So the the nerf to the living flame was actually massive because on fights that are lasting shorter than 40 seconds it cut their damage in, by 60 percent so the fire mages now do way less damage on the first two bosses because those fights are incredibly short um and it was about a 15 to 20 percent nerf overall to fights that last longer than 45 seconds so this was a huge had a huge impact uh, on the fire mages overall in the raid. Uh, let's take a look at some individual logs here on the homepage and see how the top 100 is looking. All right, we still have we still have some overall damagers. We we have three warlocks and one fire mage. So with the averages, with with what the fire mages are able to do on menagerie, they can do pretty much just so much more damage than everybody else that menagerie is able to keep the fire mages uh in the competition of course you have a londo in here who has a full guild uh that's helping him parse so he should always be in the top 100 unless warriors are just completely dog which they're not you know they're starting to get gear and slowly starting to ramp and we'll see warriors come into play at level 50 for sure uh once they get deep wounds and full fury uh, it looks like a lot more shamans are starting to hit the top 100, and we still have a few melee hunters that are hanging in here. It looks like a handful, uh, a, a good a good portion of shamans are in the top 100 in the world right now. Top shaman is doing across the board 627 damage, a uh, single target, which which is really really damn good, and that that's competitive, you know, with the warlocks as well and most of these warlocks all these warlocks are getting pi and pi doesn't have as big of effect on shamans because they're not doing as much magic damage it's mostly auto attack damage uh which is why if zatara or this ryblad guy could could get pi and it could benefit them 100 percent like it does these guys they would probably be number one uh so that just gives you a little bit of insight and uh this one guy is doing just miles more damage than rank number 13 he's doing 100 dps more so this one guy is just probably getting either incredibly lucky with crits or they are just crank oh see his direct his his dungeon clear duration is 114 which means they were waiting for full cds before they did every single attempt and then he probably also still got lucky with crits on every attempt but you'll see a lot of times 
parse groups they'll even they'll even draw out the duration of their push so that they can uh try to go for rank ones and it looks like that's what this guy this group did but overall fire mage still the kings of aoe warlocks still the king of single targets and then it's a mixture of really good melee hunters one one warrior and a lot of enhancement shamans uh in the top 100 so it's crazy that that one small change was able to knock mages off as uh as pretty much the kings of nomragon and i can i i anticipate that as uh as this goes on that more of these mages will continue to fall off the top 100 and get replaced by enhancement shamans and more warlocks as uh as time goes on unless uh yeah i just don't think that there's any like icy veins is just not gonna make up for the amount of damage like living flame was the single highest dps per global in the game i don't think anything came close to it like for the amount of damage it was doing with just one global um 20 seconds of raw damage it was just so much higher and and of course it was uncapped aoe as well so it was just way overpowered and i'm i'm actually happy that it got nerfed because i play a mage but i know when my class is broken or overpowered and it's just not fun for the rest of everybody else if uh if they're not also feeling that powerful so w2 uh the classic dev team so far let's look at check out the top 100 mages and see what these guys are doing on the first two fights of the dungeon now let's look up grubbis because the first two fights your living flame might not be worth pressing anymore all right let's take a look at some of the top mages in the world and see what they're doing um as of march 14th and march 15th to get top dps and let's see if they're still using living flame in the raid it looks like this mage the top dps mage in the world as of march 14th since the change is no longer using living flame uh fireball is his top damage he has six casts of scorch four fireballs with two procs of pyroblast and he cast one fire blast and only one cast of living bomb and this was on a 22 second fight this is incredibly fast uh it looks like he opens with it looks like he opens with scorch a goblin landmine he uses a goblin landmine into scorch living bomb and he's combusting on pull here um it looks like everyone is just going with one one scorch into a living bomb or maybe it's maybe yeah, it's scorch living bomb into um pyroblast when you proc and then he gets maybe a, a couple of fireballs off here in the last window and then throws in a fire blast at the very end but he has ignite rolling almost the entire at least half the fight he has ignite uptime so really short fight maybe he's using icy veins here is what he's looking looking like the meta now on the first boss um and that's gonna how gonna be how you're gonna be able to get the top damage on the first two bosses now as a fire mage let's check Let's check the top damage for Viscous Fallout. Okay, we have the same, uh, a different, I don't know if it's the same guy. I can't actually read the Chinese names, but March 15th, this guy here has a 23 second fight. And he is still using Living Flame. Uh, and I'm imagining that he's trying to time this Living Flame and his Blast Wave and the Living Bomb to go off, like right when all the ads come out. And it does look like he throws even a cone of cold in there uh to try and get as much procs onto uh the ads as possible let's check one more guy and see if he's using living flame for the viscous fallout fight as of march 14th or later march 15th rainy rainy is still using living flame on viscous fallout even though the fight is 29 seconds only and it's because this fight does have a portion where you're getting multiple ads. 
And so I'm imagining that he's going to be saving his living flame. We can actually check. He does save his living flame for 14 seconds when the ads are coming out. Um, and it doesn't even look like he's casting a living bomb until around the 10 second mark. Maybe he's just casting Scorch and going for Ignite procs to get his, to get his five stacks. And then he goes to pad all of his damage here right when all the ads come out. So Living Flame is still good on short fights that have more than one target. But it doesn't look like people are using um, Living Flame on single target short fights. All right. And let's just for the last person here, let's check a one minute crowd pummeler fight to see if Rainy is actually still using Living Flame. And he is using Living Flame. But let's check somebody who actually parsed a 100 or 99 recently and see if they are using Living Flame on a fight like Crowd Pummeler as of March 14th. This is number three in the world, XP, X Zip, And he is not. He has chosen to run Icy Veins on this fight. Uh, he has high fireball cast damage here and nine Scorches and six Fireballs with one fire blast at the end, two living bombs over the course of 35 seconds, which is what you want to do. Um, you wouldn't want to uh, run living bomb unless the fight was longer than like 36 seconds to have another living bomb cast. So this is, this is pretty accurate. So on single target, pure single target guys, some of the top mages, well, the top mage in the world right now is no longer running living bomb. Let's check out one our living flame. Let's check out one more mage. Yep. Single target fights, guys. Mages are running icy veins. Um, the only time they are taking living flame now is if it's a multiple target fight. Uh, let's check out let's check out the very last fight and see if mages are actually still taking living flame on thermoplug. Corbs is the highest DPS in the world. March 15th and he still takes living flame you can get six casts living flame might be okay here on thermoplug and the reason being is uh it li like every 30 seconds kind of lines up with the transition window uh whereas a three minute cooldown you'd only be able to get one use out of that so having a living flame for every phase does seem like it would be more damage and I'm almost a I'm a hundred percent sure you're still taking living flame on menagerie uh, let's check out March 14th, 922 damage. And of course, Living Flame, he has two casts of that on here, primarily Living Bombs. And uh, this mage was still able to uh, take that. So it does not look like you take Living Flame on Grubbis, Electrocutioner, or Crowd Pummeler. So the nerfs were heavily uh, uh, effective towards... Uh, single target fights for mages. Let's see if there's any more mages in the top. Let's see what this mage is. He, is he still taking living flames? He is not. Single target fights, guys. I think mages have retired living flame. And they are swapping it out with icy veins. And they're going for really big damage in the combustion PI window now. Really quickly, let's look at hunter damage. Melee hunters still on top. Range hunters are still... Looking tough. I see the SETI shot did absolutely nothing for ranged hunters. They are still dead last. Frost mages don't even count because that's a PvP spec. Ranged hunters is kind of sad that ranged hunters are this low. Um, Blizzard, I think we should probably buff ranged hunters just a little. Give them like a 10% buff. Um, Hunter has always been a ranged class and for melee to be pumping and they really just have like a two button rotation. It's not that exciting to play Hunter right now in raid and I don't even play one. Um, so I do feel a bit for the ranged Hunters. Uh, anyways, guys, that's going to be it for the DPS, uh, top DPS of the week for week four. If you enjoy this content, follow my uh, YouTube and check me out on twitch.tv slash See you next time.